Hi, this is DJ Arm 67 here. Um, I've got a really interesting video that I'd like to show you, um, and I'll be back at the end, and I've got a few comments to make. Ta. This five-week milestone could be another stage where identical twins develop key differences before they're even born. Celso and Jesus Cardenas are identical twins who were raised together. They remained physically similar as they grew up, but their tastes and interests began to diverge. Celso became interested in dance and academia, while Jesus preferred sports. The most surprising difference between the two brothers is that Celso, wearing black, is gay. The differing sexual orientation of identical twins allows us to investigate one of science's most controversial questions. Are people born gay? Celso and Jesus were raised by the same parents in the same household. So, they shared the same environment at a crucial time in their personal development. In the general population, the chance of someone being gay is less than 5%. Unless you have a gay twin. Then the chances are much higher. If you are fraternal, sharing half your genes, there's nearly a 25% chance that you will also be gay. If you are identical, sharing all your genes, there's about a 50% chance you will also be gay. This suggests that there must be some genetic component to our sexuality. But it can't all be up to genes. Otherwise, every identical pair would either be both gay or both straight some other factor must be at play. In their first few weeks, all fetuses develop along similar lines. If nothing changed, each one of us would be born female. Fetuses with the male Y chromosome will form testes at about week six, that produce the hormone testosterone. But at about the eighth week, the testosterone is released and may affect early brain development. Testosterone masculinizes the body. It also masculinizes the brain, including the hypothalamus, which partially controls who we find sexually attractive. Some scientists believe that the more the hypothalamus is exposed to testosterone, the more it sets the stage for a sexual inclination toward women. Occasionally, a male fetus doesn't produce sufficient testosterone, or its brain doesn't absorb enough to shape it along heterosexual lines. If this theory is correct, then it may be that Celso absorbed enough testosterone to masculinize his body, but not enough to fully differentiate his brain. As a result, he was left with a desire for men. Many mysteries remain, but twins like Celso and Jesus play a crucial role in informing scientists about how and when sexuality develops. Epigenetics reveals that even if their DNA code is the same, the way it functions can differ. The human genome contains around 25,000 genes, each with its own specific function, like producing energy or directing cell division. Now, geneticists are investigating a previously unknown aspect of the genome, called the epigenome. A series of chemicals that act like switches 
are capable of activating or deactivating individual genes. One of these switches works by a process called DNA methylation. Enzymes inside a cell attach a minuscule molecular compound, a methyl group, to a gene. This compound can deactivate or at times activate the gene, but the gene itself remains. The cell's DNA profile is unchanged. The activation and deactivation of genes during early development could explain many twists of fate that affect us all. Why one person is struck by disease and another is spared. Epigenetics may also play a significant role in determining sexuality. If sexual preference is associated with an unidentified gene, it may be that the epigenetic suppression or activation of this gene dictates sexual preference. These genetic switches may be the answer to why one twin absorbs more testosterone than the other, resulting in one being gay and the other straight. It's becoming clear that our health, personality, tastes, and even appearance aren't the product of our genes or our environment, but that nature and nurture are inextricably bound, with epigenetics the biological link between the two. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I've only got a few minutes um, because I want to try and squeeze this into one video. The whole natural, unnatural thing, it just ain't happening. Um, number one, every behavior that we have is by nature, within nature, um, so therefore it's natural. We've got um, observed instances of, of homosexual behavior now in over a thousand species, well over a thousand species, and well documented stuff um, in around about 500. Um, apes such as us, um, bonobos, chimps, um, we've also got macaques, um, other mammals like dolphins, lions, bisons, elephants, sheep, hyena, birds, um, swans, penguins, there's a lot of stuff on penguins. I couldn't find anything on pangolins actually, but um, vultures, gulls, um, fruit flies, dragonflies, lizards, we've got all sorts of stuff there. Um, the thing I find interesting, the, getting into the whole epigenetics thing, um, with genetics being the, the actual code with, within your genome, but the um, the, the phenotype, uh, you know, how, how that all is expressed and what it ends up being um, is, is very different. And there's a lot of other factors apart from just the, the code which um, really determines what that is. So, um, like they said in that video, you know, the expression of, uh, or sorry, the um, excretion of um, things like testosterone and, and that sort of thing can have an impact. Um, there's a, some interesting stuff going around, I don't know how accurate it is, but about, about the same time that all that testosterone is, is starting to happen, is the same time that your digits are starting to, starting to grow. And there's a, they've actually, uh, it seems anyway, that they've found a difference in the finger length or the ratio between your, your second finger, being your index finger, and your ring finger, which is your fourth finger. And depending on which way it is, you'll have... Um, a propensity to be attracted to males and if it's the other way there's a propensity to be attracted to females. Another piece of interesting stuff is the fraternal birth order effect and that's um, sort of linked up with the maternal and immune hypothesis where a mother gets progressively stronger immunization um, to male specific antigens so by the time they get to the third male pregnancy and then the fourth male pregnancy, the, the, their body is getting better and better at producing like anti-male antibodies um, and potentially even um, having like maternal cytokines going across the placental um, barrier. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that and um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an eye opener probably for some people, um, but it's it's something that you're just going to get more and more research into, so it, it, we're starting to get some really exciting results in that way. Anyway, top. Honey, I think I might be a lesbian. <laughs>